Hi everyone, this is Greg here and welcome to Just A Meme podcast where we chat about the future of making money on the web. Today we have Antonio joining us from Kendrio where they are creating better rights management and data structures specifically for artists in the music industry. Welcome Antonio. Thank you, good to be here. Yeah man. So uh, yeah, tell us a bit about yourself and uh, kind of what your journey has been so far. Um, yeah, so I, ah, it's a long story. <laughs> um, basically, um, come from Italy, South Italy, moved to the north when I was kind of a teenager. Uh, got very much into tech and electronic stuff and studied electronics in high school. Was supposed to be an engineer and go to engineering school and then realized just about there that engineering wasn't really for me. I love and still, I loved and still love tech, um, but I didn't want to just close myself in it. I went to like a, an open, uh, open day at university and it just didn't click. Um, <laughs> and then decided that I wanted to move from Italy and chose the Netherlands based in Amsterdam now and studied um, arts and culture uh, university. Cool. Yeah, and, that's a bit uh, different to uh, engineering. Yeah, yeah, very <laughs> different. But but in a way, I am so glad I've done that. I, I yeah. will regret it all my life. Uh, otherwise, in a way, it was the two things that I've always loved. I was a massive music head when I was a teenager, like really, I was, I was like this crazy, hip hop guy as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, um, but I still love tech and all that. And, um, and that was kind of like my background there doing university, I studied arts and culture, kind of like did a measure in economics of arts and etc. And the two then came together. So I started working in the arts uh, work for an art gallery for a while and then work for a video production company uh, doing advertisement as a creative creative producer and then got into the crazy blockchain world uh, yeah what was your uh, entry into that when when yeah. was that and what why <laughs> Maybe. I think, yeah it's um it's an interesting I think everyone's story meeting the crypto world or blockchain world, it's always fascinating because it's, I think for everyone, you can tell that it's just, it shifts their paradigm of what society or money or um, relationships um, can be. Um, yeah. And, and, and when, so I was working for a video production company and then, and then I got hired for this um, company called Volario, which was doing, uh, basically we were building a blockchain, um, basically a company that was around artists uh, having their rights management on the blockchain and getting paid in that way and then started evolving with that and um, got into the crypto world. At the time I was, uh, my roommate was a blockchain developer, Australian okay. guy. And he, and I was completely fascinated with what he was telling me. He was very much deep into it, yeah. genius guy. And, and I got blown out because I, for me it was, I was hired as kind of like the creative in the, in the in the company yeah and I, I i wasn't sure of of the technology yet but then having him at home literally just telling me what can be done with it was we had endless conversation on what was possible and this was also this was 2017 something like this the big so it was like early was going nuts. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just about before like the, the crazy bull run and then going through this insane frenzy and seeing it fall down 
which was interesting. And kind of realizing that beyond the, you can call it bubble or whatever, or the frenzy at the time, there were still the value proposition and the fundamentals of what a blockchain could do still held. And I stick with it and I, I kept researching, 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 even after the whole frenzy popped, let's say. Yeah. And look at us now. Now it's it's a new, it's kind of like a second wave of incredible projects, incredible, incredible stuff. In yeah, world. it's definitely reminiscent. Uh, I think someone tweet, tweeted it the other day. It's quite reminiscent of, well, the first one was 2013, which I wasn't around for when it became really easy to tokenize everything or something. Uh, 2017, when you had the ICO boom, uh, see, where everyone yeah. was doing coin coin offerings, um, and then now 21, we're looking at NFTs going off the scale, people selling ridiculous amounts, and uh, yeah, there's another part there, but I can't remember what it was. Um, but yeah, yeah, it has kind of like similar parallels to the previous hype cycles, and I do wonder yeah. how long this one will go, whether it's the super cycle we've all been waiting for, or it will kind of settle back down again. It's, it's, it's hard to tell. No one can predict the future. It's, yeah, it's, it's, um, I've been thinking about it too for a long, specifically these past two months. Um, I was thinking, okay, is this yet another wave of frenzy? I think things will eventually just, let's say, flatten. Mm. But I also feel like, you know, if you look at um, the, 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 distribution of innovation and, and, and how those um, kind of like how the market opens up to new ideas. Yeah. I feel like we've just passed the chasm of, you know, between the innovators and the, the, the crazy tech people being very much into it, the philosophy of it too, and then the early adopters and, and that with the crypto frenzy. I think crypto and Bitcoin was Kind of like the Trojan uh, horse, yeah. Uh, for this, um, and it was a double-sided, a double-edged sword. In the, meaning that everyone knew at least what we were talking about. So even if you mentioned, if you were talking about blockchain three years ago, everyone would look at you like, "What?" But at least you'd be like, "Do you know what Bitcoin is?" And they'd be like, "Ah, okay." And yeah, you'd yeah. Be like, that's the technology behind it. So at least there was an attachment to it. Um, the other part was that it was the technology, blockchain, which it's a technology and, and has nothing to do with, not nothing to do, but it's just, it's the fundamentals of the, the crazy crypto frenzy um, was kind of like linked together. So everyone that despised the airdrop ICOs and, and thinking that it was just uh, a Ponzi scheme, attached it to, to the technology. And anything that was on the blockchain at, at that time was, okay, you, you are just another Ponzi scheme guy that yeah, yeah. wants to make a quick buck. So there was that double-edged thing where, yes, everyone knew it and, it became almost mainstream, but also the things that were actually valuable and were really good tech stuff uh, got linked to it and were, were not taken seriously just because they were linked to, yeah. to that. Um, I think you need to go through those sorts of cycles for people yeah. to realize that like good people to pick it up and then go through the cycle again, like this NFT thing, I'm sure we'll find that, you know, some people are holding NFTs that are just, you know, worthless after this and some, but some will like excel even more. And then because someone finds out about it, they'll start building like this platform that we haven't thought of. That's just right. then going to blow everyone away when it kind of comes out in four years time at the next hype cycle. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I feel like now we are at that point where the early majority of just about at the early majority of, of the market. Um, and we're seeing more and more, big companies taking it seriously from Tesla to uh, MicroStrategy to Square. Uh, we're seeing more and more openness from institutional legacy yeah. um, platforms and people. We're seeing that, I mean, there's been advocates of it that are 
not per se coming from it and yet understand um, what the benefits of it from Navar Ravikant to Chamath pa Paleopatia to Mark Cuban and etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, of course, when you see, I don't know, Elon Musk pushing Dogecoin and all of <laughs> that stuff, you're wondering, okay, how much can we take this seriously? But there is also, you know, there is also like, a, a, in a way, an, an evolutionary generation. You know, like people, they are in charge now of legacy platforms. Yeah. Will eventually roll out and our generation will kind of yeah. start becoming in charge. And we will be, we, we will be people that have owned cryptocurrencies that know about it and that, that, they don't they, they don't see the 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 trickery in it or or the bs let's say yeah um so it's it's i think i think it's i am super excited i think it's exciting um do i would i put my life savings and will i throw myself all in it i wouldn't suggest <laughs> um but um I think we are we are at, at the tipping point of something fundamentally great. Yeah. Like it, this changes everything. Changes everything. Seriously. Yeah. I'll just go back to your point. I think you said earlier that you know we we kind of had that technical phase where it's heavy tech, but I definitely see a shift in what's happened this time where yeah. artists are picking it up and they're going oh my God, I can actually get paid for my work. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Anywhere in the world, you know, digital digital uh, art is, yeah. And that's where I think it's slightly different from the past because the past two cycles, I'd say, were heavy, heavy tech. I mean, I remember reading yeah. some of the ICO papers and it was, it was hard. It was hard yeah. going and you needed to be a developer. <laughs> but now yeah. you have artists and stuff and... That probably brings us on quite nicely to uh, rights management and uh, what you guys are doing. Like, how, yeah. how can we help people in this crazy boom? And uh, what are you guys kind of looking at? Yeah, so so exactly. For me, when I was at Volario, my previous company, um, we were really pushing this, but we saw that the biggest hurdle was that it was just almost impossible for them to go through there was quite a large and high uh, entry point, yeah. technically, and, yeah. and you're right. And I think we've done a, be a much better job at working on UX and UI, making it easy, making it quite affordable, and etc. Um, and we, I can draw you now. Of course, we 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 just been uh, accepted for this grant for the web, and we're looking at what specifically in the music industry has been kind of like the elephant in the room, which was, yes, we have streaming platform. Yes, Spotify is great and, and everyone can, uh, from, from the tiny independent artists to the major record labels can actually be in the marketplace even uh, yeah. and, and be able to, to potentially make a living. But we saw, I mean, it was clear already two years ago that there was such a, it was creating such a, a, a gap and in, in such a, the more the, the, the streaming platforms became bigger and bigger, the more the, the difference between uh, major artists and independent artists skewed. Yeah. Um, and so we were thinking, okay, what can we do for independent artists, which by the way, for those that don't know, is the biggest market in terms of growth, um, for the past two years, at least. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're owning more and more of the market share and more artists are realizing that signing up to a, a, a major record label, it's actually not a great deal because you're giving away percentage of your royalties, um, you have tons of uh, middlemen and intermediaries that will take a, um, a 
piece of, of your art and etc. And we've seen that with um, even bigger people such as Frank Ocean and Chance the Rapper and yeah. all those people deciding specifically or pulling away specifically to become independent. Well, the internet's um, kind of replaced. So big, big companies used to own the distribution. And this is true across every in, every industry. Like it used yeah. to be the suppliers of the distribution, the, the logistics, whatever you were making, the raw materials and stuff. They used to be the monopolies. But now right. we've got these big platforms that are aggregating the demand and they've become the monopolies. Now, right. this is probably the next step where the internet comes in and it's actually, okay, so those Web2 companies have built these platforms that aggregate demand. But now, you know, all we need is to go back to that a thousand true fans sort of exactly. model. Um, yes. Exactly. Where, you know, it's only a, a small thing and you, the internet is the distribution platform but it's open and that's i think the the big shift <laughs> right yeah yeah and, and precisely what you said i mean i love that kevin kelly uh book and and i mean it also i think like one of the major problems was that these platforms didn't understand the difference between um something like a low intent listen and a high intent listen so the idea of Pro rata basically means that, I mean, uh, there is, we're gonna take as much catalog, put it all in once, you get you give 10, 10 euro for access to the entire catalog, but it makes it so that every listener is equal. And that is not the case, it's specifically with artistry. Um, direct to fan, um, and, and, and again, intentions, high listen intentions and low intense intention. There is a big difference between a song that has been played in the background on a playlist at your party or in a, in a restaurant or in, a, in, in an HAM shop while, while you're shopping and like the big music fans. And, but those were not catered for. Um, there is people like me or many others that are willing to have that access to that direct connection yeah. and willing to pay way more. And the only ones that kind of tackled that were the Patreon, um, a couple of other, I think Patreon did more for that than anyone else. Maybe Bandcamp started yeah. doing a really good job. And actually funny enough, SoundCloud just yesterday announced that they're they're going to move to a user centric uh, model instead of pro rata, so it's starting to move off, yeah. and but remains remains kind of like a, a technical issue where if you're moving, there is a reason why these DSPs or streaming platforms have a pro rata model because it's a user-centric model, it's a bit of a headache in terms of administration. And so what I was thinking is, okay, if we can solve that and we can automate the way that uh, we know who has to be paid, how much has to be paid, the ratio at which they're going to be paid, then it's a win-win situation. We have user-centric, direct-to-fan, high and low interest, um, uh, listens, as well as a way to technologically solve the administration part. Um, so is this where sort of like a smart contract would come exactly, into play? and right. the only solution that that's logical, that, 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 that's <laughs> logical, that is possible, that we know of now, it was the blockchain. There was yeah. no other way, and um, and so we started we started looking into that uh, really heavily. Um, there was the other hurdle was, okay, how about artists that are not interested or are not familiar or not, they don't feel safe enough with cryptocurrencies and how can we, can we make sure that their transfer to fiat currencies, it's quite um, seamless. And, and I mean, XRP and, and intelligent protocol seem the best option. And now we're looking into it and we've built a prototype of a, of like a web player that 
allows for artists to upload their music with payment pointers, um, direct to fan payments based on the other, the other point is that a listen, it's not triggered after 30 seconds, but it's, if a song is three minutes, so I'm not sure if you're familiar, but in a streaming platform, your royalties click when after 30 seconds, you've listened to a song. Oh, so whether really? so you, yeah, you can't just jump so, off it. Yeah. So if you listen for 10 seconds, that is not a listen. If you listen yeah. for three minutes, that is as much as listening for 31 seconds. seconds. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that's where the prorata enters. It's right. I have spent three minutes, which is if, if I had spent 31 seconds, it's 10 times more. Uh, well, no, uh, six times more. Um, how, why, and how is it that there isn't a difference in yeah. there? And, and the intellectual protocol and, and web monetization solves that heavily because that makes a difference. That makes a huge difference. Um, the amount of engagement that I am um, giving to a certain artist should relate proportionally to the amount of money that I'm paying him and that he's receiving. It seems like a really good use case because we, you know, every, a lot of things are digital. I mean, I don't, I don't imagine you're measuring how long I play a, a thing on my vinyl record just yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but <laughs> one of the big problems about getting information to a smart contract is you don't know what, how valid the information is. And that's one of the big problems we're taking stuff from the real world into the digital world. But yes. given music is now, you know, we talk about big streaming platforms, mostly digitized, you know, you have EPs coming out all the time and people yeah. like, mostly distributing it through the internet i suppose you've got the ready-made data that's there that is verified to say okay they've listened to it for 30 seconds you get this payout they've listened right. to it for three minutes this is how it tapers in between those two and there's your payout sort of thing and it yeah it's right. really interesting <laughs> yeah i mean that is that is also one of the big problems it was kind of like the, the common phrase of garbage in garbage out Data, which was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which was okay. Whether if we want to make sure that that is the case, we don't want to. The problem with blockchain is that as it is immutable, once it's garbage in, it becomes almost worse than yeah. not being able to to change the, those data, those metadata. Um, but as again, this is also why we are we are focusing in data structures and mapping and how do you take. Um, data from an API and push it to another service in a way that's that's quite like we use basically blocks as if kind of like if you can imagine kind of like Zapier yeah, where yeah. you can automate um, how the data uh, flows through and yeah. we call it workflows indeed um, that's that's a really really big pain point um, and, and then when you put it on top of something like the intellectual protocol, where again, like it does more or less the same thing. The, the great thing about the intellectual protocol is that you can jump from blockchain to a normal database, an SQL, a Postgres database and, and back in, and you can get paid in Ethereum, you can get paid in Euro and et cetera. And, yeah. and it doesn't matter for it. As long as you have a payment pointer, it works like a TCP IP protocol. Yep. I know where the address is. I'm going to find the route to do it as quick as possible and just get in there. And, and the combination of those two, those two things, it's, it's so, incredible. Yeah. So is that, so I guess that's why probably grant for the web fits in and stuff that, so you're, you're building, is it can, can draw, can dry, can dry pay yeah. is that part. Kandraya app is the streaming platform itself. So you kind of built that first and then you got Verify as well, I think, right? Um, well, it's like more, one. <laughs> so Kandraya Pay takes care of, let's say the Uphold API and the integration with, with Coil and Interledger Protocol. Yep. Then there is the Kandraya app, which is more the metadata and the data structures and the mapping right. of that. Okay. And then there is Kandraya Player which is kind of like the, the use case. So we can pull 
and actually we're we're able to pull uh, from different other streaming platforms yeah. and populate uh, let's say a proxy player and 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 integrate uh, payment pointers on each of them and uh, and then link in a stack of data on it so we know who's been paid you can link the payment pointer to let's say a uid which is a user id or artist yep. id and then have the other stack which is can drive a pay and flow out payments from it no nice nice yeah it's it's quite like it's a bunch of blocks that have to come together but you can only do it if you have what we use what we usually do and what we like to do, it's kind of like a very R and D way, which is build an MVP, um, prototype ish and still not perfect. We don't really care about UX and UI yet, uh, but have the entire tech stack um, blocked in one so that each one of those steps can be solved in a way that it's that it's seamless that you don't have to go in and out or um, or have to have additional resources or additional platforms yeah. to make it work yeah, so yeah. you have a small and rough um, prototype but it's you know it's consolidated yeah yeah well yeah that, i mean like there's i think this is the whole premise of web3 is that interoperability so coming in and out of different things and building it all into right. one thing Right. Um, but something yeah. we touched on earlier, the user experience is probably too technical for a lot of artists for now. So having a, a nice, nice way to do that in one stack. Brilliant. Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and it's not supposed to be their work, you know, yeah. it's like artists do best when they work on their art and we have failed at making sure that they can, they can and should be paid as much as someone wants and thinks the value of it yeah. um, to him directly. And I mean, like they have to jump in and out from platforms from uh, they are distributing music with Fuga and then they are handling their rights with another company, say Revelator. And then they're listening to Spotify, SoundCloud, um, Bandcamp and et cetera. And then they're doing their marketing on social media. like. They're using, I think, like at least 10, 15 platforms yeah, to yeah. be able to do one thing, which is push out their music, people listen, they pay them back. Yeah. And 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 I mean, this is this is also the premise, is all these intermediaries. We as we saw the rise of UGC platforms and content making becoming a digital asset, a proper asset. Now, like owning your music, owning your videos, owning a piece of content, it's an asset as yeah. if it is owning, I don't know, a pair of shoes or a car or, or, a, or and it will become increasingly so. Um, we saw that a lot of intermediaries and a lot of middlemen put themselves within it because they knew that if the more platforms they have to use, the more links that have to be done and the more links to be done the more you can put yourself in between the nodes um to to regulate that yeah. that linkage um and, and artists are just flocking away i mean they have no alternative and therefore they have to do it this way um but if they like one of the things that i realized already two three years ago is how they are like the outcry for a better alternative has been they are almost to the point of well a lot of them almost give up really if you're an independent artist like it's very very hard not to give up and yeah, just yeah. Say, you know what i'm just gonna get a job and normal you know yeah no cool so i suppose that kind of brings us quite nicely onto like what the grand vision is for this and i suppose it's to empower those artists to make a living in a yeah in a way <laughs> yeah you know, that's kind of sustainable <laughs> yes yeah definitely that's that's the main point and i think we can see now that it's possible that it's possible in such a way that it's seamless that it's um integrated enough and, and consolidated enough that 
like acquiring new artists, it's not as difficult anymore because before it was, it was a bit too difficult to get them on board and be able to be like, okay, you have to do a lot of steps to be able to even just register your song. It's better for you, but it's not, it's not there yet. But now we see that, okay, now we're there. Um, the other part is, I mean, there is potential for a huge amount of other things. You know, this is, this is the core. Yeah. Um, there is a lot that can be done uh, on top of it. And we've seen, I think the pandemic accelerated that, that, um, that process. Yeah. Um, we've seen a lot of tipping. We've seen a lot of virtual events. We've seen a lot of um, Twitch pushing a lot onto, onto music and, and content creation, making sure that those were paid, run for the web and web monetization is actually integrated into Twitch. Uh, we've seen legacy platforms starting to look into it, uh, Spotify acquiring, uh, Dapper, uh, sorry, um, Media Chain, which is um, yes. a blockchain platform already quite a while ago, uh, Universal Music acquiring Dapper Labs, uh, which were, infamous crypto key, uh, crypto kitties guy yes. and looking at how nfts and how all of those things can work out for for artists we've i've seen plenty of other um platforms one is fuse which does an incredible job at kind of like treating artists almost as if they're like a stock you know you're 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 funding an artist with the idea and the hope that its value grows. And we've seen uh, kind of like blockchain streaming platforms growing and becoming really like quite a, a, rep, a force to reckon with, such as Audius, uh, Loom does a great yeah. job. Uh, there is another one called Matter. We've seen like uh, marketplaces being integrated in streaming platforms so people can buy and sell um, stuff like um, sound packs and things like this. So it's been evolving. And, and, and I think like, you know, this is what happens. It's beyond the crypto frenzy and, and the, the ups and downs of that. The technology has been rising steadily and then it reaches a tipping point where there is no way going back. And everyone yeah. else that didn't jump through wants to jump through the wave, but will will also kind of remain behind. The, the great thing about why I really sticked with it was I want to have a first move advantage on everybody else because I know this is, if we crack it, it has insane potential. Yeah. And we did crack it. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I think that's quite a, a good thing to end on, to be honest. I think it's quite hopeful and it's kind of touched on everything we're kind of talking about and yeah. of course, what we hope the future will become. Um, yeah, yeah, it's um, I'm very positive and, 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 and to anyone out there, especially independent artists or people who are involved uh, and are still doubting, I can assure you it's going to happen. It's going to happen and it's going to be great. And of course, there's going to be, there's going to be things that we will see that we didn't, um, we didn't anticipate. Yeah. There's going to be second order, third order consequences that we didn't look through. Yeah. But I think we are at a point where those things will not, will not bring it down to such a point that it's not valuable enough. And we yeah. will have to find a new alternative. So future is bright <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh no, nice uh yeah so i think that's all for today uh thank you so much antonio for jumping on and you, sharing guys. your thoughts and I'm really excited to see where you guys go we'll leave all the links in the descriptions um and yeah just to say thanks for tuning in again um this has been uh myself and antonio chatting about the future of rights management and data structures uh for now in the art in the music industry maybe more later um, and yeah and how we make money on the web in the future so i think really exciting episode and thank you for your time
Thank you for your time. All right. Cheers. Bye. Bye.